Republican from Texas. He is going to be voting along with uh, most of the Republicans to repeal health care and also has a very strong view on our relationship with China, which is why we wanted to talk to you today, Congressman. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be with you. Great to have you with us as well. I want to ask you about the uh, health care debate that's taking place because uh, critics of going forward with this say it's a pretty futile exercise, that it's not going to make it through the Senate, so why bother? What's your take? Well, I think it sends a strong message. I think most people realize that if it passed, it's not going to pass the Senate and the president wouldn't sign it. But it represents what the people are saying and what they were saying in the last election. So I think it's very logical. I think it's very important. I think it tells us what we should do in the future, uh, though that whole bill probably won't be repealed in anywhere in the near future. I think it might set the stage for cleaning up a lot of it, especially, you know, the mandate, insisting that every single American has to get into this program. So I, I think it's very, very good. And I think we'll get some Democrats to vote for, and I can't imagine any Republicans voting against it. But it's not going to go through, it's not going to get through the Senate, and it's certainly not going to be signed by the president. Right. You're right on, my, on that. Um, the interesting thing, though, is the president seems to be leaving the door open for at least some discussion on this. He said, look, you know, the bill can be improved, but um, working toward repeal is sort of going backwards. I mean, do you think that there's wiggle room with this administration to maybe get in some of the changes or some of the tweaks that you all think would make this better? Yeah. Yeah, of course, from my viewpoint, when I don't think the government should be involved in medicine, anything in that direction would help. And I think they've backed off on the 1099. They realize how expensive that would be for small business people. So that looks like that will be taken care of. And I think the mandate would be important. So many government programs I disapprove of, but I always think if you're legally allowed to get out of it, it would be helpful. And right now, this bill flipped it over and said, no longer can you legally opt out of a government mandated system. So whether it's education or whatever, I always like the idea that we still have hope and we can legally opt out and fight for ourselves and opt for a free market answer. I think it's interesting, though, because you said that you don't think the government should be in medicine. I mean. It, it is so deeply entrenched, I mean, between oh, yeah. Medicare and Medicaid and everything else. Um, it, it seems that that would be an, an impossibility. Well, it, it is. I mean, we can't, we, we're not expecting to even push back on Obamacare. So it is a political impossibility, except the tragedy is, is it will disappear but in, in the middle of a bankruptcy, because we do know that Medicare and, and Medicaid, as well as Social Security, are, are, are bankrupt. So we can't maintain it. And the only thing the government can do is defy it by messing it up, by rationing it and cutting back services. So in, in the midst of a financial dollar crisis, uh, it, it quits functioning. And just like you think about what happened in the Soviet system, you know, when they collapsed, they weren't thinking about how to provide medical care. They had to have a new system come in rather quickly and open up the doors to a market approach. So, yes, uh, no, uh, it'd be very difficult to systematically reverse it because the politics are so powerful. Right. But the continuation of our policies today is uh, guarantees that it will fail completely. You have, uh, so turning to China, you have advocated a hands-off approach. You say we shouldn't be in the business of uh, meddling with other countries' domestic politics. But as uh, we look to China right now, China owning near, nearly a trillion dollars in our debt, the major trade imbalances, what message do you think the president needs to send today in his meetings with President Hu? Well, I, I would like the message to come out and say that we've learned a lesson. We should look to ourselves. Our policies have made it difficult for us to compete. And we can't go looking for scapegoats. We can't blame China for us spending too much money and printing too much money and buying cheap goods and doing so much to undermine our corporations here and our industries. Uh, so it's, it's easier to start business in China. They're more capitalistic in many ways than we are. So we should recognize our mistake. But to, to fight with China now, I mean, they're our third best partners. We sell uh, as much goods there as, uh, as, as more than anybody else. We're, they're third in line. So I would say they're great customers. And to argue that they're the problem, then we say, well, they're messing around with their currency. What have we done for the last three years? <laughs> you know, first, we doubled you know, the monetary base. Now we have uh, QE2. And that's, that's currency manipulation. Shouldn't we look to ourselves and say that we, we should have a sound economy? We should have, do everything we can to promote productivity here. But because uh, China is flawed, which they are, uh, we, we shouldn't blame them. Besides, one thing that we do that they don't do is they're, they're becoming a world power. Right. And they're, they're increasing their military power. 
but they're in, increasing their influence by investment. We waste all this money and energy with our military empire and all the occupation, and they're buying up rights to oil and other minerals at the same time. We're just consuming our wealth by saying we're going to secure our oil in the Middle East. And just think of the horrible cost of what's there, not in, only in lives, but in dollars, which compounds our problem because that's inflationary. That causes the pressure on the Fed to in, even buy more debt. So I say, look to ourselves when we have a clean house and we have a perfect uh, protection of civil liberties here in this country, then maybe we can preach to others. It's always great to get your take, Congressman Ron Paul, this morning. Thanks so much for joining us.